Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller here with your Sana Q&A Monday. So I'm answering another question here. It says, thank you for all your amazing videos. I have not been formally diagnosed, but based on all the information I have online, I am pretty sure I have CPTSD as a result of a few things. First of all, my family of origin was and is very dysfunctional. My dad was also physically abusive. This set me up for some abusive relationships, both personal and at work. I am blessed now to have a wonderful and supportive husband, but I still have a difficult time at work with narcopathic types who have mobbed me at two places where I worked. I'm trying to keep this short, but they mobbed me and tried to destroy my reputation. Lately, I always seem to become the office scapegoat. My husband is helping me to finally set up an art studio so that I can do something with my creative talents, but I feel guilty for taking time to do this and not getting a corporate job again. What can I do to make myself less of a target to narcs in a work situation? I may return to work part-time while we get the studio up and running. Thank you. So first of all, I'm really sorry that you grew up in a family with so much abuse. I'm really sorry. And great job recognizing, you know, where the patterns and the conditioning was learned. Like you've now recognized that you're finding these situations in your adult life because of the family dynamics and the conditioning that took place in your early life. So it sounds like you're starting to work on that, which is awesome. You know, the work situations are challenging because it's like you're stuck there and it's like you're, it's, it's your lifeline because you have to earn a living on planet earth. Like you have to, right? You gotta pay bills in order to survive. It's just one of the things of living on this planet Earth. Like unless you're living in a monastery, right? Where you have this whole kind of community set up to take care of you and you have a begging bowl and you go out and people, you know, give you food. That's that's a different situation. But for most of us, like we have to earn a living here on planet Earth. And if you have grown up in these situations, it's like you're probably constantly attracting this over and over again, you know, work, friendships, relationships, whatever. It's like all over your life. And the work is like an easy place for this to come up. And, you know, this, this is what drove me to become self-employed. Like I realized I had a different calling than what I was doing, which was teaching high school at the time. I recognized I was a teacher, but that wasn't the kind of teaching and the kind of environment and the thing that I wanted to do, you know, but like I wanted to live life on my own terms. That's why I wanted to be self-employed because I wanted to have control of my life. I didn't want someone else to tell me what to do and to control my life and to be working for someone else and, you know, under all of their rules and their manipulation and, and all of that. I just, I didn't want anything to do with that. So it's awesome and it sounds like you have the support of your husband helping you to set up your creative work, your art studio. Fantastic that you have that support. That guilt that you feel, I call that the nine to five guilt, right? So after I quit my job in 2004 teaching, I had been self-employed since 2004. And after I quit my job, I would wake up every morning, like when school was in, you know, when I was like anticipating, even though my job was like seven to three or seven to four, you know, the nine to five guilt is people, you know, most people have this nine to five career, you know, they wake up, they go to work, maybe it's eight to five, you know, but it's something in that range. And so you'd wake up in the morning or I would wake up in the morning and I would have this like, like almost like panic guilt that, that I wasn't, you know, doing what I was supposed to be doing. And it's like, that's so messed up because like that, that's the very conditioning that our American school system has ingrained in our heads. You know, the American school system was set up by, you know, the bigger powers that be to train people to work in office cubicle type jobs. You were, you were, you, you sent through the educational system to become a cog in the wheel. And it's so crazy that when you separate yourself from that cog wheel position, you start to have the guilt of not doing it because everybody else or most people are following along in that path. And you start to feel like something's wrong with you for not doing that. And that guilt might come in and out, you know, frequently through your self-employed life. And it's okay, you know, learn to recognize that that's the old programming that's talking and that you are allowed to contribute to this earth in different ways and that you are allowed to earn a living in different ways and that we are all different and we all have some unique talents that we can create some sort of platform, you know, to offer this to other people. Because there's whatever it is that you have, whatever 
talent or knowledge or experience you have, there is someone out there who needs that. There are probably a lot of people out there who needs that. So recognize that you have value. If you're thinking, you know, it's anyone who's listening, if you're thinking about becoming self-employed and starting a business and you're just like so tired of these jobs where you're just always surrounded by sociopaths or psychopaths or narcissists and it's just it's constantly draining. And maybe too, you just, maybe your work situation isn't horrible, but you just don't feel like it's fulfilling you. You feel like there's something else out there for you to do. I highly recommend considering that. You know, and like you said, maybe getting a part-time job while you're setting it up, right? Yeah, that can be necessary for a while, you know, because it's terrifying when you don't have money. And it's, it's really hard when you're putting so much pressure on your art to sustain you like your cost of living, right? And then it's it's almost like that creative side of your art suffers because there's all this pressure. I recommend to you reading this book, Big Magic. Um, this is by Elizabeth Gilbert. She was the author of Eat, Pray, Love. That book is exactly about this. You know, uh, I think it would really help you to tap into that. Um, you know, and, and two, when you're thinking about going self-employed, understand that your agenda is entirely under your control, right? Like if you're working for somebody else, you're working on their agenda. You show up at this time, you do these activities, you leave at this time, there's, you're on their agenda, right? The more control that you have over your own agenda, the greater the sense of freedom you will have, right? So when you're self-employed, it's all on your terms. You decide when you work, when you wake up, when you go to bed, when you do certain things, it's all you. And it's gonna increase and increase your sense of freedom. You know, it's one of the most one of the most awesome things about being self-employed. Mobbing, what you're talking about at work, this is one of the most horrible forms of abuse because it's like all of them against you and you feel so outnumbered. It's like the bullying in high school when it's like all these people against one person, right? You just you feel so devastated because you feel like you're the only one, you're the odd man or woman out and it's all these people against you, you really start to think, well, maybe I'm the problem or something's really wrong with me if all these people, right, are against me. But like, that's the nature of abuse and abuse by proxy. Abuse by proxy is when there's like a head narcissist, psychopath, sociopath, right? And then they recruit all these other people to do their dirty work, you know, to abuse you for them. They get off on watching you abuse and they don't even have to get their hands dirty because they have all these people, this entourage abusing you for them. That's so common that this happens. You know, we don't talk about mobbing as much when we talk about narcissistic abuse, but this is a huge thing. And it's really common, like you said, in work situations, right? Um, so, you know, from these lessons that you've had at work, you know, especially when you're in like this mobbing situation, like if any of you have ever been in a situation like that, even when there were two or three people ganged up against you, I guarantee that you found a greater sense of strength and courage inside yourself because of that than you ever have in your entire life. That's the invitation. And if you haven't found that strength and courage yet, this is your invitation now to look at that. That might be the calling there, is that you have to find it inside yourself. When no one else around you is believing you and everyone around you is putting you down, you have to find that strength and that courage inside yourself to stand up for yourself, right? And if you're talking about work, you know, and so how to deal with a work situation like this for a temporary period of time, knowing that you're just helping to bring in some income as you're setting up and getting your business off the ground. It could take six months, it could take a year. It depends on what you're building and you know, what goes into it and how much help you have and blah, 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 right? So it could take some time. It might not be immediately. So it's good to have, you know, some backup income in the meanwhile, while you're at work in one of these situations, I would cross all your T's and dot all your I's. I would be very, you know, check and double check all of your work before you turn it in. Make sure you're on top of everything. Everything is turned in. Make sure any communications you have with anyone at work is via email. That way everything's in writing and it's not, I didn't say that. I don't recall. And you're not dealing with these gaslighting situations like that. You're like, well, actually on this day, we agree this and that. 
and you just forward the email and it's right there and they can't argue with it and if they argue with it you just take that to someone else it was there it was in writing keep everything in writing keep your nose clean make sure everything is dotted and crossed and taken care of and double checked right and don't reveal anything personal. Don't get personally involved with anybody at work. Don't go to the lunches and involved in the gossip. Don't get involved in you know, the coffee room or the water cooler gossip talk. Don't develop any kind of, you know, hang out with people after work, you know, happy hour, weekends. Don't do that kinds of stuff if you wanna be sure that you're keeping that distance for your safety, because you don't know what you're getting into. If it's a mobbing situation, you may not even realize that that person is a flying monkey. You know, that person could be playing a really good part. You, you don't even realize that they're like extracting information for, from you to then use against you with the rest of the group. So be really careful, you know, um, don't try to fit in you know, don't work to fit in. Just recognize and understand that it's okay if you don't belong and it's okay if you're not accepted. This is a temporary thing. Keep your goals in mind. Recognize this is a stepping stone to move you toward your avenue of self-employment that you can do anything as long as you know it's temporary, right? As long as you know it's temporary. I mean, we have all, mostly, I imagine we have all had to do work that we didn't want to do work that either compromised you know, our integrity to some degree or felt like we were selling a piece of our soul in some way to do that work. You know, just showing up day after day, just, it feels like you're selling a part of your soul and, and in a way we probably were, right? But sometimes we have to do those things for short periods of time as stepping stones and as long as we keep moving forward and we have a plan and we're taking action to move forward, then we know it's, it's okay, it's just for this period of time and then we're moving forward into what we actually want, into what's truly in alignment with our integrity in life. And you know, at work I would just, I would be pleasant you know, not overly polite or overly interested in everything, but I would just have a pleasant demeanor. I would have a confident demeanor. I wouldn't like shrink away and hide. I would, you know, pleasant, but at the same time, not really interacting deeply with anybody. I would, you know, know that you're going to work, you're gonna do your job, you're gonna do it well, because, you know, you wanna feel proud of yourself. So whatever you do, do it with your best. Even if you don't love it, even if you know it's temporary, do your best because that shines more about you than it does about that situation you know and even if no one recognizes your work and the value of your work even if no one appreciates you you will appreciate yourself you will be able to walk away from there knowing that you did the best that you could that you gave that a hundred percent of yourself even though it wasn't the thing you wanted to invest in long term you gave the best of yourself so you can feel good about being in integrity with yourself, you know, that you did the best you could, even if you didn't like the situation, even if you didn't like the circumstances, even if you didn't like the people, you did your best, right? So that you have no regrets, right, about it. And, and just collect your paycheck. And every time you get that paycheck, think to yourself, you know, instead of like, oh God, this sucks and it's so bad, think to yourself, I'm so grateful for this money. I am so grateful that I am able to show up and to earn this money and I'm so grateful that this is temporary and I have X amount of time left before I leave that job and embark fully on my self-employment, you know, on developing my business. And any of you who are thinking about setting up your own business, you're just getting some ideas together and stuff, highly recommend checking out Brendan Burchard. Brendan Burchard, he has several different you know, avenues. One is Experts Academy. If you go to expertsacademy.com, he starts sending you free training. If you enter your email, he sends you free video training. It's amazing. He gives away so much free content. He was one of my biggest inspirations. Like everything I know about business, I learned from him. Like the reason why I'm able to even have a functioning business now is because of him. And not just the business aspect, but the personal development aspect. You know, another one of his brands is high performance academy he teaches you how to be a high performer that doesn't mean peak performance where you like peak and then you crash and peak and then you crash he means sustained endurance over time how to be able to do that and that is that's something that every self-employed person needs to have and what you'll realize is that as you're creating your own business it's almost like the more you take care of yourself, the more you invest in yourself, the more you invest in your self-care, the more you invest in your personal development, the greater your business does. It is directly related. The more you value yourself, the more other people value you and what it is that you're offering the world. It is absolutely directly related and you'll never understand that as, as like, 
sharply as you will until you own your own business and just see how clear that connection is. So check out Brendan Burchard's information. It's fantastic for any of you looking to set up your own business. And you know, he really teaches you like not to think small, not to think that you have to conform to what everybody else is doing because that's the safe thing. Like having a job is not job security. There's no such thing as job security anymore. This is not the world of our grandparents or our parents, depending how old you are. Or if you know, if you're older right now, it's not the world that it was you know, 50 years ago. It's a very different world. There's there's no more job security as we once thought of it. And what you'll find is that investing in your business, and by investing, I mean resources like time, energy, money, all of that, right? Investing in your business is one of the greatest investments you can make. A lot of times we think we're investing in things and we're actually creating expenses like a car. A car is not an investment. A car is an expense. A car is gonna cost money to keep up and it's gonna depreciate in value over time. Your business ideally will increase in value over time. The more that you invest in it, the more the value increases in your business. Just like the more you invest in your self-care, the more your self-value increases, right? So I'm sending you a big hug and I wish you all the best as you're setting up your business. Check out Brendan Burchard to get some more inspiration and guidance on that. And you know, to all of you who are just dreaming about something different and thinking every day like, man, I'm just so tired of getting up and going to work at this soul sucking job. I want something different. I want to live life on my terms. Think about setting up your own business. And I don't mean just quit your job and drop it and like face the sheer terror of maybe not having money in your life. No, I mean like set up a plan, right? Like this person is talking about working part time and she also has the support of her husband. If you're all alone, right? And you have to do this on your own, then you have to create a timeline that's gonna work for that. So you know that you still have some kind of paycheck, some kind of reliable money coming in as you're working to set this up and then it makes it worth it. You know, everything that you have to do in the meanwhile to get there, it makes it worth it because you will never experience that much freedom as knowing what it's like to have your own business. And yeah, it's a lot of work. It really is because it's all you. And, and if you don't show up and if you don't take care of your business and if you don't take care of your customers and your clients then you have no business, right? But first and foremost, if you don't take care of you, you have nothing to offer anyone else. So the most important investment you can make in your life is your self-care, investing in yourself, and you will see that directly related to your business and the growth of your own business. I'm sending you a big hug.